three years after the end of the war, a young man named Ray White found himself outside Arnold Academy. Rumor has it that every famous magician has passed through its doors because this is the best witchcraft school. Ray White decided to find his audience and open the student's guide. Immediately the guys came up and offered to help. Ray White explained that he had just arrived and was looking for an audience. The guys advised to follow them because they are on the way and they are always happy to help a nobleman. The tall guy introduced himself as the son of the Albert dynasty, Albert Allium. Ray White also introduced himself and said that he wasn't a noble at all. Albert Allium immediately changed his face and told his guys that they should go. The girl asked Ray if he was okay, and then she advised not to pay attention to the guys because they think a lot about themselves. The girl said her name was Amelia Rose and she was happy to meet you. Ray White admitted that he didn't know the city's customs and probably did something wrong since those guys were offended and abruptly left. Amelia Rose laughed and called Ray very funny. She explained that he was too careless for this place and advised him to be careful. This is a school of aristocrats and all students are divided into noble ranks, and Ray White was the only commoner since the school opened, and so his path will be very difficult. And the way he was met unkindly will be repeated all the time. Every day you will have to face contempt and hatred. Ray said she was totally right, but he didn't really care, and he's not going to give in to that, he just wants to enjoy school life. Amelia Rose said it was too optimistic or frivolous. Ray agreed with the latter definition, and Amelia laughed and said he was really funny. The girl suggested that Ray become friends if he certainly does not mind. Ray was happy with the offer and said that since he was from a long distance, he was completely alone here, and so he will be happy with her. Amelia Rose thought about it for a while and said that they should definitely get along. Ray reminded him that since he was a first-year student, he needed to join the others in the classroom. Amelia Rose asked if Ray knew about the gossip surrounding the first years, gossip about the Wizard of the Blade. Ray said he hadn't heard anything like it. Amelia Rose said that the genius wizard who appeared a couple of years ago was an expert in ice magic. Hence, he was given the nickname Ice Blade Wizard, and it is said that he is one of the seven greatest magicians of this world. And if you believe the rumors, this mage might be among the Academy's entrants. Ray White told Amelia that if he wasn't mistaken, he must have heard her name somewhere before. But the girl didn't say anything. Then, in the classroom for first-year students, everything became clear. The representative of the new students, the first among the three major aristocrats of the Rose dynasty, Amelia Rose, was greeted. The girl happily greeted all the new students and said that she was glad to study with them at the same academy. Ray White was surprised that the girl he had befriended so easily was one of the top three aristocrats. The new students gathered in the Arnold Academy Square and started discussing things among themselves. Ray, on the other hand, remained alone and watched the others. At this time, the female students surrounded Amelia and showered her with compliments and admired her greeting. Ray thought it was a good thing that he was in the same class as Amelia. After all, she has so many fans and she gave a good speech. Then Ray saw a strange man who turned out to be a teacher. Ray thought that he had expected something very different and had expected a more strict teacher. Judging by her appearance, the woman had a terrible hangover. She said her name was Helena Grady, and she was their teacher. And since it's their first day of school, everyone needs to be young. Helena Grady waved her hand and created a block of ice, and then she said that she had a couple of tricks that she would be happy to show the students. Amelia wondered if such pillars of ice were used in gossip about the wizard, and apparently that was how Helena decided to impress the new students. Helena Grady said that Arnold Academy is the best magic school in the world, and she is confident that a new generation of incredible abilities is just around the corner, and so she's going to find the best. Helena announced that the first task was to create an ice pillar, and how it turns out they can be free. The students started trying to do something, and everyone bragged as much as they could. But in the end, nothing worked out for anyone. 
The first person to make an ice pillar was Amelia Rose, and everyone stared at her in surprise. The freshman students began to praise Amelia for her success. But Amelia herself was not happy, because she turned out worse than Helena. The teacher said that this is exactly what she expected from the representative of the first-year students, and this is very good. Amelia Rose thought of her new friend Ray and decided to see how he was doing. Ray tried as hard as he could, but he knew that this task was difficult for him. Albert Allium sneaked up on Ray and told him that this was the first time since the school was founded that people like Ray were being brought here, and that's why this circumstance is very annoying. Albert said that he didn't like it when someone like Ray was here, especially since there were various rumors about him and maybe he was just a common liar. Amelia Rose intervened and demanded an end to the argument. Albert asked her why she was so worried and if Ray was her boyfriend. The girl replied that this was complete nonsense. Amelia asked Ray not to be silent, but he said that he had nothing to add because Albert was absolutely right. The students immediately started discussing the event and decided that the rumors really weren't lying. Albert became angry and stated that he was demanding that Ray White take part in the duel on his behalf. Albert said that he couldn't be around Ray and that his very existence was disgusting. Amelia Rose had asked him not to say that about Ray, but Albert ordered her to be silent and shouted that women had no right to give advice and instructions to one of the three nobles. Ray Y came closer and said that he was ready for a duel. And Helena reminded me that she hadn't given her permission yet, but it was still very interesting. Helena said that the loser fulfills the wish and magic is completely forbidden. Amelia Rose said Ray doesn't have to be involved in this, but the guy reminded her that Albert had offended her and therefore she needed to get it. It's unforgivable to hurt your best friend. Ray promised that soon Albert would apologize to her. Amelia blushed and said that they had recently met and why such sacrifices were made. Ray just thought she was really cute when she was worried. And then the fight started and Albert charged. Ray decided that he would deflect attacks and dodge, but Albert's sword wasn't easy and it wasn't easy to do it. Helena muttered that the guy was using magic against her orders. Amelia Rose began to ask the teacher to immediately stop this fight because everything is not going according to the rules, but all Helena said was that she was tired of it. Then the teacher even said that the battle of the guys is quite an interesting sight, and it is absolutely not necessary to stop such an exciting show. Albert couldn't believe that Ray was blocking his attacks so easily. He decided to apply the matter change Enchanted Flame and turns the sword into a hell of deadly fire. Even a small wound from this sword can cause serious damage. Albert is tired of the fact that the opponent is not going to fight, but just constantly block his blows. Albert shouted angrily that he shouldn't be trifled with. After all, he is an aristocrat and then from a great man trying to become the best from birth. And so, with pride and a strong will, he worked hard every day of his life. Unlike people like Ray, who never do anything, there was no way he would lose to a commoner. Ray was outraged by the accusation, as if he really wasn't doing anything. Ray rushed forward and remembered that he should dance proudly on the ground, and since he had lost everything, he should not spare anyone on the battlefield. He was reminded of his excellent senses and the whispers in his head that never stopped. He even recalled that strange moment when he had gained the power given to him by the darkness itself, but he didn't think he needed it. Ray knocked the sword out of Albert's hands with a lightning-fast movement of his hand, and then he told Albert that he should apologize to Amelia Rose. All the freshman students looked at Ray with admiration and recognized his complete victory over Albert. Then everyone noticed the strange behavior of Albert, who stopped and clearly had something on his mind. Amelia understood all at once, for Albert was capable of meanness and cunning. Albert wondered how it could have happened that he lost, because he was moving perfectly and he should have won. Besides, he's an aristocrat and he can't lose to a commoner. Albert threw himself at Ray with fire magic, but the special power allowed Ray to react to the attack from behind. 
Ray's sword made Albert cry out loudly, and everyone was surprised at how easily he parried the attack. Albert couldn't understand what was happening to him. It seemed to him that this was some kind of hallucination spell, and this simply couldn't be happening. After all, his body absolutely does not obey. Ray White thought that this moment was too dangerous, further more than he expected. After the duel, he went to see the head of Arnold Academy, Abby Garnett. She immediately asked if he had used his power during the duel. Ray apologized for his offense and said that he was ready to bear the punishment he deserved. Abby Garnett grinned and said she didn't blame him at all. And even more so, she is now retired and it is absolutely not necessary to call her by her rank. Abby Garnett looked at Ray and said that she was glad to see him as an ice blade wizard. Ray said he didn't think they used such nicknames at school. Abby Garnett appreciated Ray's sense of humor, which was always on top, and offered him a cup of tea. But Ray said he didn't want tea at all. Abby Garnett heated the tea to a boil and offered Ray a cup, but he still didn't want it. Abby Garnett said the tea tasted good and he shouldn't have said no. And Ray thought that she was the only one who could drink black tea heated to boiling point. Abby Garnett asked how Ray had enjoyed his first day of school. Ray explained that there was nothing to tell yet because nothing much had happened yet. Although the only thing that can be noted is that he found a girlfriend. And then, for some reason, Ray remembered the terrible moments from the past. Abby Garnett advised me not to worry about anything because there are so many strange things in this world, and he is still young and has to do what is typical of young people. Do something beautiful, go to clubs, love others, learn everything new. All this will allow you to feel this new world, and you just need to enjoy school life and not lose beautiful moments. Ray pondered Abby Garnett's words and walked down the street. Suddenly, Amelia asked why he was so sad and sour-faced. Ray asked her why she was still here because it was time to get back to the building. The girl explained that she had forgotten something and needed to pick it up immediately. But Ray didn't understand what she was saying. And in the end, Amelia Rose admitted that she just wanted to thank him. After all, she should have said it earlier, it was then that he fought for her. Ray immediately remembered that Abby Garnett, that you need to be passionate about something and just be a young boy looking for love and entertainment. Amelia Rose asked Ray to forget everything she had told him about the Academy when they first met. And then the girl, noticeably cheered up, exclaimed that they would have a great school time ahead of them and there was no need to worry about anything. Ray thought that was what he needed right now. Just enjoy school life, just like Abby Garnett suggested. Amelia Rose noticed Ray's smile and asked if he was laughing at her. He immediately began to apologize and say that this is not the case at all. And then he said that he was very grateful for her help. Ray promised that everything would be fine and that he would listen to her. But Amelia Rose was once again accusing Ray of making fun of her. Ray laughed even harder and said that she had misunderstood everything. Abby Garnett during the meeting advised to enjoy school life. Ray asked if that was the only reason he'd been invited to this office. Abby Garnett grinned at Ray's insight, and she said she had something important to tell me. The head of the Arnold Academy explained that it would be about magic theory. They magicians have a skill based on primary matter. Primary matter is the basic material for all objects, desks, chairs, rivers, and trees, as well as humans and animals, they also have primordial matter inside them. It turns out that primary matter and its transformation methods are the basis of magic. This technique is called code theory. Code, in turn, is a type of information. Magicians always start converting matter into code material. This involves four steps. The first is coding, changing the code of primary matter. The second is decoding, that is, installing the code. The third step is processing, which increases or decreases the code information. And the fourth is the incarnation, the process during which the code is converted to magic. Abby Garnett explained that the level of Ray's magic spell also depends on the theory of the code, and the spells themselves fall into four categories. These are low-level, medium-level, high-level, and sacred-level. 
and if at a low level you can create a normal fireball, then at a high level you can create a super fireball. During the lesson, they explained that there are many industries in this category, like quick magic and other different options, but this will be a topic for another lesson, so it's worth waiting a bit. The teacher asked if anyone had any questions, and if they did, they could ask them. But in the meantime, they will stop at this material. Amelia Rose told Helena that class was over and it was time for her to wake up. Half drunk, Helena did not immediately understand what was being asked of her, but she came to her senses and exclaimed that the lesson was finally over. She praised the students for their abilities and called Amelia a good teacher. That was about how Ray's first week of high school life went. After the duel with Albert, everyone started saying that Ray was just lucky, and all the nobles who study at the academy continue to look at him with disgust because he is not one of them. Afterwards, they even gave him the nickname Stunted Wizard or something like that. They called him the Stunted Wizard because he can't use his magic. Ray thought that if the director found out about this, she would definitely burst out laughing. But we must admit that recently everything has been quite calm and peaceful. Teacher Helena said that next week there will be a practice session in Kafka Forest, so we all need to group up in groups of four. All the students immediately wanted to be in the same group as Amelia Rose, and they literally began to race to offer her an excuse to join, which even caused scuffles between the students themselves. Ray was surprised by this behavior and avoided them. The Kafka Forest Tour is the first challenge for Arnold Academy students. The vast Kafka Forest is located to the north of the Academy, and this forest is a very dangerous place where many monsters live. And every year it happens that someone is sure to get hurt in this forest, and some even change schools after such an ordeal. And that's why everyone wants to join the group with the strongest student Amelia. Ray asked why he was with her, because there are other outstanding guys besides her, or is it still because of her influential family? The guy asked if Ray didn't know anything about her family. Ray explained that all he knew was that there were three dynasties here, and he doesn't know any more details. The guy told him that the eldest daughter of the Rose family. In general, there are three big dynasties, Rose, Algren, and Bradley, and their influence among wizards is much higher than the rest. And so it's no wonder that Amelia, as a descendant of such a family, always tries to become the best student at Arnold Academy. That is why all new students want to be in the same group with her. And Amelia herself is now one of the top five most talented students. Ray decided that in that case, he should look for someone else. Evie immediately suggested that Ray team up and form a band. Ray explained that he was still bad at magic, but Evie said that it was not a problem at all, because it would not have to be used and it would be enough good physical training. Evie said that he considers Ray a friend and that's why they need to be together. Ray was surprised by this attitude and replied that Evie was a good person. Amelia Rose said she'd been looking for Ray for a long time. Ray asked if it was convenient for her to talk to him since all the other students were looking at them. But the girl replied that she did not care about anyone. Amelia asked, Evie who he was. Evie replied that unfortunately he was a classmate of hers. And then he introduced himself as Evie Armstrong and called himself Ray's best friend. Amelia Rose was very surprised by this statement and Evie added that they had known each other for a week. Amelia asked how they had become friends so quickly in just one week. Ray reminded her of that first day when they said goodbye and he went back to his dorm. It was then that Ray met his neighbor, Avi's burly boyfriend. They immediately found a new hobby in training, which made them friends. And that's exactly how they met. Amelia Rose asked him if it was the first time he'd met Evie naked. Avi explained that the training was going on outside of space and time, and that was why they were so close. Ray agreed with his friend and Amelia thought it was all very strange. Amelia asked why Evie called her princess. Evie Armstrong explained that he called her that because he thought she was beautiful, and he also likes her gorgeous figure and perfect shapes and proportions, and if she wants to make her body even more gorgeous, then she should just start working out. 
Amelia Rose explained that it all looked like undisguised harassment and told Evie to fuck off. Evie didn't back down and offered to come back to the subject later. But Amelia had only screwed him up again with some unpleasant words. Ray thought that despite their misunderstanding, they should find common ground. Ray decided to leave them alone for a better introduction. And taking advantage of the long variable, I wanted to go and take a little walk. Ray started exploring Arnold Academy and admired its huge size. He realized that it truly deserved the title of the best magic academy in the kingdom. Ray was constantly thinking about what he should do with the practice group because no solution has yet been found. Ray noticed an interesting book in the girl's hands and decided to get it. The girl screamed at his sudden appearance and Ray apologized for startling her. Ray introduced himself and found out that the girl's name was Eliza. Ray asked about the contents of the book and Eliza began to tell him everything she knew. She then apologized and explained that she had never expected to be able to spend hours talking about Herr Einschwarz with people her age. Ray replied that he didn't think she was weird and she didn't need to worry. Ray asked which class Eliza was in and it turned out that they were in the same class. The girl explained that very few people notice her presence. After all, she usually sits in the corner of the classroom and practically does not communicate with anyone. Ray suggested that it would be nice if she was more confident and open to people. After all, if you ask him for his personal opinion, then he thinks it's cool and smart and to know so much as it is not given to everyone. Elise was immediately embarrassed and tried to explain that it wasn't quite what Ray thought it was. He, in turn, asked her why she always wore a hood on her head. But then, thinking that this was not an easy question for her, he said that he didn't have to answer it. But Elise said that she needed to be brave and so she had to take off her hood. Elise took off her hood and Ray realized that the girl was half-elf. After all, her ears were sharp. Elise explained that her mother was an elf and her father was an ordinary person. And she was always bullied before because of her unusual ears. That's why she decided to wear a hood so that no one would see them. Elise asked if she was really weird. Ray admitted that he really thinks she's weird, but there's nothing wrong with that. Elise asked him why he was treating her so well and what was the reason for his kindness. Ray thought about it and said he didn't know. Then Ray decided to calm her down a little and said that she was a very beautiful girl. Ray explained that her ears were incredible, of course, and he even forgot about her beautiful eyes. After all, the eyes are so cool that they attract the gaze of everyone who looks at Eliza. Her voice is also very soothing and makes you feel better. Eliza was embarrassed by such compliments and Ray said that he would not lie and everything is true. The girl was amused and thanked for the kind words because no one had ever said so many compliments to her. Ray said he wanted to ask Elise something. He asked her if she would mind being in a group with him for next week's classes. Elise was visibly happy about the offer, but she asked if Ray was confident that it would meet his expectations. Ray replied that he was absolutely sure of her and would be very happy if she decided to join his group. Elise replied that in that case she would be willing to accompany him as he was quite popular. Ray admitted that he's not really that popular. Amelia suddenly appeared and asked indignantly how Ray dared leave her alone with such a preoccupied jock. Ray replied that she was wrong and all teenagers are like that. But Amelia Rose could not calm down and continued to resent this act of Ray. Evie, meanwhile, said that Elise was very cute without a hood. Even though he knew they were classmates, he didn't always notice her. Evie explained that he was a friend of Ray's and would be happy to be friends with her as well. Elise replied that she only knew Ray and Amelia and that she didn't know anyone else in the class, and very few people notice it. Evie introduced himself and said they were friends now. Then Amelia came over, and Elise was a little startled by her look. But Amelia Rose said that Eliza was a very pretty girl and had soft cheeks. Anyway, she's a real darling. Ray thought back to his conversation with the head of Arnold Academy. Abby Garnett reported that she had learned about the infiltration of the Imperial Spy Academy, 
and although their goals are unknown, it still will not bring anything good, so they need to be caught as soon as possible. Ray replied that he understood everything and would try to find them. Ray asked what to do with them after they were discovered if they could just kill them. Abby Garnet replied that Ray could do whatever he wanted. But if he killed them all, it would only make things worse. And one thing you need to remember is that these spies are not so simple, so you need to be careful and circumspect. Ray told Evie that Eliza would now be in the same group as them. And now there are already three people in the group, so it remains to find the last participant. Evie said that we should look for someone else who is still available and finish forming the group as soon as possible. Ray asked if Amelia had anything to say about it. But suddenly the railing cracked and Eliza fell screaming from the roof. The first person who rushed to save her was Ray. Realizing that there was no time to think, he applied encoding, decoding, processing, and implementation. Ray hurried as fast as he could because the ground was rapidly approaching. He tried to create a storm with medium magic, but it didn't work out very well. Amelia and Evie came to the rescue. They were able to catch up with their falling friends and use magic to land safely. Amelia said that if it had been a little longer, they would have definitely crashed. Evie Armstrong was trying to figure out why the fence had cracked at all, because it had to be very strong. Ray examined Eliza, asking if she was all right and if she was in any pain. Elise replied that she was fine, and then Ray visibly calmed down. Ray thanked Amelia and Evie for their help, because if it hadn't been for them, it would have been much sadder. Amelia reminded Ray that she couldn't use magic properly. Therefore, you should think about your own safety and not be an idiot who does not know his limit. Amelia said she was pretty sure Ray didn't even know what to do in practice in the dangerous woods. She reluctantly informed them that just to save them, she would join their group and become the fourth member. Ray asked her why she didn't want to be with the girls who were always following her. Amelia replied that she didn't like them because they were stupid and annoying. Amelia reminded Ray that they were actually friends and that was why she wanted to be in the same group as him. Amelia promised that she would help and now Ray can rely on her. Ray thanked her for her help. And Evie Armstrong laughed and said that Amelia was actually looking for the right moment to say it. Amelia immediately became angry and began to resent that this was not the case at all. At the same time, she called Evie a damned, pumped-up pervert. Looking at all this, Ray realized that they really were all friends. Ray remembered what Abby Garnet had said about the treachery of Imperial spies. And could Amelia, with her high-level magic, be one of them? Although students are far from this. Ray thought that maybe the head of the academy was right because she warned that the enemies would definitely get closer. So it's not all a coincidence. Ray looked at Amelia and wondered if she could possibly be a spy. Evie called to me to hurry up and Ray said he was already running. Ray decided that anyone would be sorry if they laid a finger on his friends. The day of training in the Kafka forest has finally arrived. Amelia Rose said that everyone had been preparing for this day for a long time, which means it's time to start the test. Evie Armstrong admitted that he is a little worried about his result. And Eliza complained that she was too excited to get enough sleep, so she didn't feel well. Amelia Rose asked how Ray was doing, who looked positively beaming with joy. Amelia asked him why he was so happy because everyone else was just worried. Ray explained that he loved sword art classes, but nothing beats a real fight, so he waits for the challenge to start. A group of aristocratic students asked if Amelia was really so interested in a stunted wizard, and what she saw in him that the others didn't. Amelia Rose just glared at them. And then, as always, a relaxed Helena announced to everyone that training in Kafka Forest was starting right now. Amelia was outraged that even now the teacher was drunk and indifferent to everything. Helena decided to explain the rules and the era said that in the forest there is an object in the very center of it, and everything is allowed for use, both physical strength and magic techniques. And for the entire test participants are given 48 hours. At the same time, everyone should spend the night in the forest. And so you should not forget about your safety. 
Amelia thought that this was going to be a very long day again. Helena explained that today the main enemy of the participants is demons. She warned that the forest was infested with demons and that a battle would be inevitable. Each of the students will receive their own weapons and a set of basic accessories. Helena announced that the briefing was over and the test would start in half an hour. Therefore, everyone should gather at the start. One of the students decided to ask if the test was so dangerous that they could die during it. After all, there are rumors in the academy that every year students are seriously injured and even sometimes die. The girl said it was a stupid test and she didn't want to die here. Helena agreed with the girl. She explained that the Kafka forest classes were too violent for beginners. But one way or another, no one will die this year, and if everyone is wondering why, then everyone should know that she, their teacher Helena, will join them in the competition. The students did not take this news very well, and many decided that now they would definitely come to an end. Suddenly, a huge snake appeared from the forest, which began to rapidly approach the students. But Helena, in full view of everyone, walked with a surprisingly even gait to meet him. But as soon as she incinerated the snake with fire magic, she said that the forest is certainly a very dangerous place. Well, it doesn't matter where the students will be or what they will do. It will always be able to protect you from all threats. Then Helena laughed and promised to at least try to do it. Ray and his team arrived at the launch site five minutes before the start of training. He saw that something was wrong with Amelia and asked if she was okay. Amelia Rose admitted that she is very worried and cannot cope with the excitement. The girl explained that their teacher was a real idiot. And initially she thought it was very cool, but now everything turned out to be different. Avi asked Amelia to calm down and not make a problem out of it. Ray said that whatever the case, their teacher is quite a talented magician. But Evie suggested we discuss it later. Right now it's more important for them to look at their equipment. All that was found in the bag was a watch, some food, a sword, a bottle of water, and some other unimportant trinkets. Amelia Rose said there wasn't much useful about the gear. But Ray didn't agree with his friends and said it would be enough. After all, the bigger the load, the harder it is to carry, so everything is so balanced. Amelia said he might be right, and Evie said it would be nice to know where the middle of the forest was now. Ray explained that there was only one way to do it with a watch. You can also determine the direction of the north by the rising sun. And knowing where the north is, you can determine the rest of the world. There are also some methods for determining the direction using vegetation. After all, it happens that some plants grow exactly from a certain side, which is proof when navigating the terrain. Ray explained that his mentor taught him this, which is why he remembered it so well. Amelia Rose was surprised by this knowledge of her friend and asked who he really was. Ray said that he often practiced in rural forests and tried many methods. But Amelia thought that didn't sound very convincing. Ray wondered if his tricks weren't working because that couldn't be happening. The announcement was made that the time had come and the training session could be considered started. Everyone heard Teacher Helena's voice and Ray ordered the group to prepare. Each of the groups went in search of the center of the forest, trying to be the first. Sensing danger, Ray stopped his squad and asked everyone to get their weapons immediately. Ray explained that something was coming and we needed to be prepared. Sure enough, a huge monster soon appeared. Avi Poe was preparing for the fight and said that you need to stick to the plan and he will act together with Amelia. Elise was very frightened and began to whimper. Amelia Rose yelled at Ray to take care of Eliza. Amelia told Evie that she would take care of the monster's wings and Evie said that he would take care of the rest. Ray, looking at the frightened Eliza, decided to calm her down and asked if she was all right. But the young half-elf was in a stupor. Ray realized that she was not feeling well at all and apologized for thinking only of himself and did not notice that she was so scared. Eliza began to cry and asked why no one else was afraid. And now she understands the girl who was afraid before the start of training. Eliza admitted that she was very scared and could barely control herself. 
The young half-elf began to apologize because she didn't want to worry anyone. Ray told Elise that he was actually very scared too, and there was nothing wrong with that. He explained that those who always have to fight for their lives will never do without fear. Ray reminded Elise that she wasn't alone right now. After all, she is next to the representative of the freshman Amelia Rose, the owner of the great power Evie Armstrong, and of course he, the hated wizard of the school who cannot use magic, and they are all friends who will always help. Ray said that Eliza herself is an important member of the group because she is the best at magic, so she has nothing to fear right now because she's not alone. And if Elise ever feels afraid, she just needs to rely on her friends. The young half-elf thanked Ray and promised to try to control her fear. Ray said he was glad to hear it. Then he asked if Elise could ask for something. Meanwhile, Amelia Rose used her lower magic to attack the huge hornet with a fireball. And Evie was desperately trying to cut down his opponent with his sword. Evie Chagrin said that this monster is too fast and evades attacks well. He asked Amelia Rose if she could use high magic. But Amelia explained that if she used high magic, she would burn the entire forest to the ground. And it's very risky. Amelia asked where Evie's incredible strength was that he was bragging about. But Evie explained that right now, he couldn't use his full power. Amelia didn't accept this explanation and slapped Evie in the face, and he screamed that he was in pain. He asked why Amelia was doing this. But she explained that this was how she saved him, otherwise he would have been melted by the hornet's attack. Evie Armstrong said they needed to get out of here somehow and figure out what to do. Ray apologized for keeping them waiting and explained that Elise was fine and really a strong girl. Ray told his friends that it was too early for them to lose and urged them to prepare for battle. Ray organized an attack on the giant hornet and ordered Evie to hit from the right, and I asked Amelia to throw fireballs from the left. Evie thought while attacking the hornet he realized that something had changed in him and he was no longer afraid. Ray shouted to Amelia that he would help her jump up and attack better. Amelia herself realized that there used to be two of them, but now, thanks to Ray's precise orders, the three of them attack much more effectively. Still, she wanted to find out who Ray really was. Once high enough, Amelia decided that she wouldn't destroy the entire forest from now on and used mid-level magic to cast a pillar of fire. Evie was delighted and asked if they had destroyed the hornet. But Amelia Rose said that it was unlikely, because for a monster it was just a scratch. All of this made the monster even angrier, and Ray ordered everyone to duck down to avoid its attack. Avi asked why the hornet hadn't died, since such bee-like creatures must die when they lose their sting. But Amelia reminded him that this wasn't some simple bee, and even a dumb jock should have known that. Ray ordered his friends to immediately take up the trees. Ray then signaled to Elise, who was already ready for action. The young elf remembered how she had never been humiliated before because of her long ears and hair, and so she began to hate her unusual appearance. At that moment, he also decided to wear a hood to protect himself from others forever. This decision condemned her to the absolute loneliness to which she gradually got used, being alone became the norm of life, but then they started studying at the academy and announced the formation of groups to practice in the Kafka forest. But that day, when Ray suddenly spoke to her, everything changed. After all, despite her appearance, Ray praised her. And Amelia Rose actually called her very cute and even strong Evie advised not to wear a hood. All of them helped her become different and see the world in a new way. Eliza realized that her friends were hoping for her, but she couldn't move and kept hating herself. The young elf reminded herself that her friends were counting on her, so it was her turn to save them. Elise activated mid-level magic and cast storm. An incredible force crashed into the forest, and the friends could not understand what was happening at all. Everything went as expected and hornet, and they were able to defeat the monster. Elise thanked her surprised friends and explained that she was referring to the incident on the roof. But the three of them yelled that she was talking nonsense, because they were the ones who should thank her. Evie said it was cool when she hit the storm. 
Amelia also appreciated Elise's incredible power, and Ray said it was cooler than he expected. He thanked her for her help and said that she was really up to speed. Elise was happy at this moment and blushed with embarrassment. Everyone started laughing and joking at her, asking if a bee hadn't bitten her. Ray's group advanced deep into the forest. Ray told me that you need to get used to fighting monsters, but then he realized that the team was exhausted. Everyone was surprised that Ray wasn't tired yet and said that he was moving too fast. Ray explained that he was already used to the forest area, but at the same time felt that he could not control his internal code. And the internal code is a magical technique that improves the ability of a person to control the primary matter that is in the body. Ray said that such a grueling walk is a great way to strengthen your body like Evie's. Then everyone heard a strange noise and became alert. Ray noticed the arrow on the tree, and Evie said that it was he who drew it recently. And how is this possible because they were going exactly to the goal? But Amelia said they must have gotten the direction wrong. Elise told Ray that maybe the forest had led them into its magic trap. The young elf explained that the forest had probably misled them all with its magic, and it turns out that the wrong path appeared as soon as they entered the forest. Ray and Amelia complimented her on her knowledge of magic. Evie asked them what they should do and how they should get out of the trap. Ray wondered what the point of this ordeal was. And there is a very easy way to remove this magic, but he can't do it while the team is with him. Ray told his friends not to worry about what had happened. After all, primary magic is not eternal, and there will definitely come a time when they cannot weaken. And so now it remains only to have a little rest. Evie Armstrong was happy with the rest and said it was hard to fight without a break. Evie asked Amelia if she didn't want to rest, but the girl only replied that he was too carefree. Then I decided I should sit down and catch my breath. Evie asked if she had spread out a handkerchief to sit down and rest. He laughed and added that this was exactly what he expected from a member of the Rose family. Amelia was offended and said that she hated being reminded of where she was from. Ray asked if it wasn't something to be proud of to belong to one of the three major aristocratic dynasties. Amelia explained that it's not really that, it's just that she doesn't want to be recognized just because of her family. Amelia said she didn't want to judge people herself just because of the cover. And she doesn't care who she communicates with, she just wants to get to know people through communication. Amelia Rose admitted that she is happy to be around her friends. She started to say something else, but the loud rumbling in Evie's stomach caught everyone's attention. The good-natured jock excused himself and explained that after three hours on the road, he was very hungry, so his stomach was giving signals. Ray agreed with his friend and offered to try the defeated bee. But Amelia protested and said she hated even thinking about it, and she would never eat a vile monster. Ray advised him to try something new in his life, but the girl immediately sent him far away with such an offer. Amelia Rose said she would die faster, but she wouldn't eat the stuff. Then Ray thought about it, and Evie thought he was just offended by Amelia. Ray decided the ordeal was getting weird, and it is not clear why the giant bee that attacked them was one, because such individuals usually move in groups. Then a strange sound came from deep in the forest, and Ray realized that it was something unusual. Even though he can't sense anyone's magic, but we can only say with certainty that this is something dangerous. Ray ran forward and ordered the others to wait for him on the spot. Amelia Rose tried to help Ray, but Evie's strong hand stopped her. Evie said she should listen to Ray and do as he said. The girl was surprised by Evie's unusual seriousness, and he explained that Ray just needed to get some privacy and go to the bathroom. Ray thought he couldn't see very clearly from a distance, but now it's clear that it's a bunch of spiders that are crawling out of nowhere. As Ray moved on, he noticed a group of prisoners bound in cobwebs. I immediately learned that one of them was Albert Allium. Ray estimated that there were more than a hundred spiders here, and such a preponderance of power was clearly not in his favor. Ray shouted to Albert that he was coming to save him, and the captured nobleman was surprised because it was the same stunted wizard. 
Ray activated the internal code and applied inertia control. With the help of acceleration, Ray was able to destroy the top ten spiders and rushed forward. Albert wondered what those strange moves Ray was using were. Albert was surprised that Ray was able to use speed boost and inertia control at the same time, and it allows you to move in all directions. And it's not clear how Ray was able to reach this level of internal code in just one night. After all, without experience, this is absolutely impossible. Albert wondered who the guy really was. Ray was able to free all the hostages and asked if they were okay. The nobles couldn't believe that they were saved by a commoner they despised. And Albert said that no one asked him for help and they had a secret plan. Their conversation was interrupted by a loud noise made by a huge spider. The aristocrats shouted in horror that this must be the mother of all spiders. Ray said that he would borrow Albert's sword and ran towards the monster. Ray applied inertia control and acceleration again. Then, when he managed to get close to the spider, he applied immobility and cut the monster down. Albert was startled by what he saw and couldn't believe how easily the commoner defeated the monster. Ray asked if Albert could stand up on his own. But Albert couldn't get over his pride and demanded that Ray not look down on him. Then the enraged nobleman yelled that if it wasn't for Ray, he would have been able to sort it out on his own. But Albert couldn't meet Ray's gaze and fainted with a groan. Ray sensed someone else's presence and asked the stranger that he probably wasn't from the academy. The dark figure said that Ray was quite good at handling danger. But if he is going to die soon, then it is not necessary to give an answer to the question of a dead person. Ray realized now whose presence he was constantly sensing. He asked the stranger if it was his doing, creating huge spiders and a hornet monster. The dark magician replied that they were really his cute creatures and how could they not like them. Ray asked what he needed and what his goals were. To which the dark magician said that he needed people, talented people, and it didn't matter if they were alive or dead. All he wants is their brains. Ray was horrified by the magician's vile motives and realized that he would not back down and calm down. The dark magician said that Ray had a very beautiful face and then asked him to look at him with a calmer look. But Ray replied that he wasn't going to comply with the enemy's requests. The dark mage grinned and asked if it was really that hard to fulfill his little request. After all, Ray could have been a little kinder. Ray decided that this whole conversation didn't make any sense and that he needed to get rid of this mage as quickly as possible. But when Ray attacked him, he realized that this wizard was giving orders to monsters and wouldn't be so easy to deal with. The dark wizard laughed and said that he was sorry that they couldn't come to an easier agreement. He explained that he could use his magic to control the minds of such creatures. And for creatures, it's like living in a dream, because first it shows them what they dream about. And then he shows them enemies who supposedly want to destroy everything they hold dear. And this is how creatures give up their own lives and follow any orders. In fact, all this happens only from despair and hopelessness. Ray wondered what he should do in this situation, since it was really hard to fight so many monsters. And even if he tried to attack a dark mage, they would just become his shield. And if this continues, it will only get worse. Although at the same time, in no case should you involve the rest of the team, because it is very dangerous for them. The dark mage laughed and asked if Ray was really trying to protect his people. The dark wizard said that he had already seen Ray save one person, and it was funny. After all, that person is very weak and his heart is full of despair and arrogance, because he is a typical aristocrat who values only himself. And even though Ray saved his life, that Albert guy didn't even thank him for it. But on the contrary, he only reproached and reminded the status of his family. The dark wizard asked if Ray didn't think so himself, since it was the absolute truth. Ray replied that Albert did stick to his principles, but he was still a very brave man, and he was brave enough not to run away and try to save his partners. Ray said he was proud to be in the same class as this guy. The dark wizard burst out laughing and said it was all great, but Ray had better look at his feet. 
Ray felt his legs being shackled by bugs and realized that he was being attacked by all the creatures controlled by the Dark Wizard. As soon as Ray was surrounded, the Dark Wizard declared that everything was ready and now Ray could enjoy the poison bath. The Dark Magician said that now he would be very interested to see how all this will turn out. But Ray began to resist desperately and used his sword to try to get out of the trap. The Dark Wizard admitted that he was surprised that Ray was able to protect himself from bee venom, and it was commendable. Ray himself felt his vision become a little blurry due to the bee venom. But he also noticed that right now the Dark Mage was completely defenseless, and now there is a great chance to attack it. But as soon as the sword pierced the Dark Magician, Ray realized that it wasn't a real one. The Dark Mage laughed and said that he would be interested in seeing Ray's nightmares. Ray tried to concentrate because it was just an illusion. Therefore, you cannot listen to the words of a Dark Magician, but only need to rely only on your feelings. After all, everything is just an illusion and there is nothing in Java. Ray heard hundreds of voices begging for help and blaming Ray for their deaths. It was all distracting, but Ray told himself to focus. Then he heard the familiar voice of the man he had once failed to save. He asked why Ray had done this to him. Then the dead man's voice asked why he had forgotten about him and was now quietly enjoying the wonderful school life. After all, all this is unfair on his part. Ray felt something snap inside him, something he hadn't expected at all. Meanwhile, Amelia complained that it was getting cold, and Evie Armstrong suggested a bonfire. Elise also noticed that it was getting very cold. Evie said it might have something to do with the nature of this forest. Amelia Rose wondered why Ray hadn't returned yet and what he'd been doing for so long. The Dark Wizard was indignant and couldn't believe what had happened. He looked at Ray and wondered how this could even be happening. And what did this guy do to him if he can't move? The Dark Mage realized that Ray wasn't so simple when he approached him. Touching it, the Dark Mage felt chaotic negative emotions run through his body. And then, after a moment, he realized that Ray had been able to imprison him in an icy world. And there is only one person in this world who is capable of such a thing. And this person is an ice blade wizard. The Dark Wizard kept telling himself that this was simply impossible. After all, it's impossible to believe that the wizard of the ice blade is here and even turned out to be some pathetic kid. Ray said it was time to get back to the point. Ray stated that since the Dark Magician's job was to capture people, dead or alive, it was probably a professional task. And so he must find out who the conspirators are, where they are now, what they are doing, and what they have achieved. The Dark Mage gritted his teeth and realized that he was trapped with no way out. The Dark Magician said that why? Would he answer all these questions? It reminded Ray of his past life and the mass killings of students who were executed by the justice forces. The Dark Wizard asked why Ray was the one who preached to him out of all the people because it was ridiculous, and why a killer like him enjoys a carefree school life when it's so funny to watch. Ray couldn't believe it, he said it wasn't true. But the Dark Wizard continued to resist Ray wondered how he had managed to weaken his defense since it was impossible to escape from such a spell. The Dark Wizard declared that they would see each other in hell and wished Ray to disappear into the eternal prison of pain. But Ray expected this and defended himself, and the Dark Magician realized that his magic was simply erased. The mage was trying to figure out how this was even possible, since Ray was able to deflect his magic without using his own. This just can't be happening and it's not real. Ray promised to bring the Dark Magician to the teachers, but for this purpose he will stay here for the time being bound by ice. The Dark Mage made another attempt to attack Ray. Then he said that he would say something to Ray as a reward for his efforts. The Dark Magician has stated that they are custom names, the very people who search for the whole truth in magic. But the Dark Magician did not attack Ray and committed suicide. Ray realized that the magician knew that he would not win and decided to end his journey in this way. Ray was interested in the last words of the magician, who told him a lot of strange information and even mentioned his school life with envy and anger. 
Ray decided that he would find out later, and now he needed to get back to his team. A cracked branch caught the attention of the friends around the campfire, and Ray told them that he was finally back. Ray's mentor had told him that since he was going to be a student of the academy now, he should know something important. Ray asked what was already so important that his mentor hadn't managed to explain to him during all these years together. The mentor explained that in the first place, he should never reveal his true identity as an Iceblade wizard. This title is a much bigger burden than he can imagine. And because of him, other people's attitudes towards him can be turned upside down. Therefore, you should never forget her words and advice. The whole team was warming up around the fire and roasting meat. Evie Armstrong admitted that he couldn't take his eyes off her because he was so hungry. Evie asked the girls if they would eat this fine meat, but they unanimously answered that of course not, and it would be easier for them to starve to death. Amelia asked Evie if he was going to eat all that meat himself, but the good-natured jock reminded him that he was not alone and he had a hungry partner. But Ray didn't hear his friend's words right away, and then he apologized because he thought about it and listened. They continued to stare at the flames. Ray thought that it had been half a day and his body was very tired, and because he hasn't recovered yet, he has a bad headache. Ray recalled that his mental state had deteriorated to about 10% during that moment of confrontation with the Dark Mage, but he still managed to lock him down with ice, and it would be interesting to know what would happen if such a thing happened at 100% strength. Ray also remembered all the accusations of the Dark Magician, and it did not let him rest. After all, if you believe his words, then he is also a murderer. Evie Armstrong asked a friend what he had been doing for so long in the woods. Ray thought about telling his friends the whole truth, but then he remembered the words of his mentor who had warned him about the heavy burden of his title and how other people's attitudes will completely change because of him. Ray tried to come up with something on the fly, but Evie, seeing his confusion, said that if he didn't want to talk, then he didn't need to. Out of the blue, Amelia Rose grabbed a fried piece of meat. She couldn't stand the smell of food, and her hunger overcame her prejudices. Eventually, she managed to chew the meat and said that if Ray was able to return to them, it was already a good indicator. Amelia reminded them that Ray still hadn't told them anything about himself. But when the time comes, she'll be happy to hear his story. Then Amelia Rose said that since Ray was tired, it was their turn to try harder. Ray remembered her saying that there was no way she would eat meat, but now eating it with pleasure is amazing. Evie Armstrong agreed with Amelia, and even Eliza promised to do her best. Evie joked that Ray was probably just tired when he went to the bathroom. Amelia immediately asked me not to say that to her when she was eating. Ray thought again of his mentor who had told him that one day he would meet real friends and they would never abandon him even when they found out his secret. And such people can be trusted in everything. Ray thought that she was right and that was why he went to this school. To be together with his friends and one day he will still reveal the secret of his identity to them. The next morning Ray and his team set out. But very soon, due to the magic of this forest, they began to weaken a little, and so they headed straight for their destination. Of course, they tried to help each other along the way and moved further into the depths of the forest. In the end, they found teacher Helena, who was waiting for the first students. She even wept with joy and called for me to come closer to her. The entire team rushed to her, but Ray ordered them to stop immediately because this is just a trap. The friends reacted in time and Ray explained that this is an absorbing trap and it is obvious that it will be at the end of the test. Evie praised his friend for his discretion. Elise explained that this is a spell that is applied to the absorbed area, but it is not clear who could have done it. Teacher Helena exclaimed that it wasn't obvious, but no one answered. Then Helena called everyone too boring because they do not allow her to have fun at all and Amelia and the others thought that Helena hadn't changed at all. Helena said she had to admit that they did very well. And since she can't see the rest of the teams yet, and there are 36 hours left before the end, then you can congratulate Ray's team on passing the Kafka Forest exam. 
friends began to rejoice and congratulate each other for the fact that they managed to do it and in addition they coped first. After training in the Kafka forest, teacher Helena gathered everyone in class. She congratulated me on finishing the test and praised me for my efforts. Evie wondered why they were taking classes even after such a difficult test, and Eliza moaned and complained of being wildly tired. But Helena promised that she would not detain everyone for long. Therefore, now you should listen to her very carefully, and she will familiarize you with the test results. Helena immediately congratulated the team of Amelia, Ray, Evie, and Eliza first. The aristocrats didn't believe that the team that had a stunted wizard was able to achieve such success, and in the end, everyone decided that this victory was entirely due to Amelia Rose. Amelia immediately got angry and wanted to tell everyone what she thought about the aristocrats. But Ray was quick to calm her down and she didn't scream. Helena admitted that the test was really very difficult, especially the trap she had prepared at the very end, and so she would never forget the students' emotions when they encountered her. Helena noticed that the trap idea was very good. Some of the students who had fallen into the trap became even angrier at this moment. Then Helena suggested that we return to the main topic. She reminded that it was a useful experience for everyone and she wants students to remember two very important points well. You need to understand the basic things and how each of the students reacts to the environment. For example, an absorbing trap connected to some remote sensor. You should also pay special attention to certain codes. Helena explained that the number of possible combinations is limitless. Among them, there are six types of applications that are used most often. On the next page of the textbook, there is a brief description of them, so students should read it carefully. Fast magic, one that can be used faster than normal. Remote magic, the kind that a wizard activates from a distance. Chain magic is one in which the wizard can activate several codes in order. Delay magic is activated with a delay. Material replacement, a magic that changes the properties of the original object. Extensive magic is so whose code can create a large size structure. Helena said that she was done with the information, but she was sure that her students were going to explode with knowledge right now. She said that everyone was free and reminded me that the holidays would start tomorrow, so everyone should do their best and have a good time. Ray asked where Amelia was going so quickly. The tired girl replied that she urgently needed to take a bath. Amelia Rose thought that she would finally be able to wash up, and Poe had enough of Eliza with her. Ray's students came up to him, and he immediately realized that they were the guys from Albert Allium's team. They all thanked Ray for saving them. They then explained that since he had risked his life for them, they wanted to apologize for their actions. They also said that after Ray saved them, Helena helped them. But it was at that moment when Ray saved them that they realized that the nickname they gave him was very stupid. Therefore, they are very sorry that they laughed at him. Ray rejoiced at this end of the feud and replied that the main thing was that they were alive and out of the forest. Ray then asked where Albert was now, since he hadn't even come to class. The students said that after they returned, Albert locked himself in his room and did not come out and even if they tried to call out to him, he wouldn't even answer them. That's why they don't even feel comfortable and they're worried about Albert. Ray agreed that it wasn't very good, and the girl in his group explained that he was actually a good person, but only sometimes can be very stubborn. But that only makes it cute. The students promised to take care of him and thanked Ray again for his help. Evie asked if Ray would be free tomorrow. After all, it would be nice to work out together after a workout. Ray replied that he would love to be with him, but he already had plans and showed permission to leave. Evie Armstrong was surprised and asked if Ray was going on a date with a girl. Ray replied that it was true and would go to the meeting. So they'll see each other later after he gets back from his date. Evie wondered if Ray was going to date Elise or Amelia. After all, it will be very interesting to know. The next day, Ray went to the west of the Arnold Kingdom. Along the way, Ray felt that many things around him brought back memories and also enjoyed the sweet smell of the place. A maid greeted Ray on the doorstep. 
she said she was glad he was back. Ray said he was very happy to see her too. Then he asked Carla where her mentor was now. The maid invited him inside, where she was waiting for him. Ray thought that it had only been three months, and it felt like forever since he had seen his mentor Lydia Ainsworth. The mentor was happy to meet Ray and asked what it was like to study at Arnold Academy. Lydia Ainsworth immediately asked if Ray had a girlfriend, and Ray, after a moment's thought, replied that he had two of them. The teacher was very happy and asked Carla to bring her sake as soon as possible to celebrate. She also wanted a cake. But Ray explained that it was just a joke and he didn't mean it. Lydia Ainsworth is actually a heroine who once made a name for herself on the battlefield but was now forced to spend the rest of her life in the shadows. Ray said he'd brought a bouquet especially for her and she thanked him for his attention. Ray asked her how she'd been feeling lately. Lydia Ainsworth explained that she is getting much better. And although things are different with her legs, but it's really easier for her. Ray's mentor, the former Ice Blade Sorceress, is a memorable warrior in the Far East Company. Due to a severe wound received in battle, she lost the ability to walk. Lydia Ainsworth said that she would stop talking about her because she wanted to know how Ray was doing. She asked him about his school life. Ray said that he was not immediately received very well and even called the stunted wizard. The teacher replied that this was not surprising because the school is full of nobles who are too arrogant. Why did she laugh at his nickname and say that even for a mage, it was a very funny nickname? Ray said that nevertheless, he was able to make friends in himself and now everything is fine. Lydia Ainsworth asked him why he had suddenly decided to visit her on his vacation. At the same time, I gave out a not funny joke and haven't even moved on to the main topic yet. The mentor asked me to tell you what the real problem is, and at the same time, she demanded to cover all the details. Ray once again made sure that nothing can be hidden from the mentor and told about all the events in the forest. Lydia was surprised by everything she heard and said that the man in black was probably one of the Empire's spies, and they definitely knew who they were looking for, so they attacked Ray. Ray asked her if she knew them all. Lydia replied that she had many sources of information of her own. And eugenics is an organization whose sole purpose is to search for the truth hidden in paper. Ray asked if they were just researching magic. Lydia Ainsworth said that the question is how they do it. She asked if Ray knew what an engram was, but Ray said it was the first time anyone had ever heard that definition. The mentor explained that there are some modern magical studies that focus on magic as a whole, but only on its core, and magicians call an engram the brain substance that registers magic. And if you answer the question of what an engram really is, then we can say that this is the brain mechanism that controls the magic present in each person. Therefore, the members of this organization collect the brains of the most talented wizards, and after they started doing this, they broke a serious taboo. Ray said that now he understood what kind of organization it was and what its goals were. Ray explained to his mentor that he certainly remembered what she said about keeping your title as an ice blade wizard a secret, and that he can't use his power while he's in school. But in three months, he made friends, and he thinks they're the best friends he could ever ask for. But still, if a eugenics organization does this kind of thing, he doesn't want anything to happen to them again. So whatever happens, and if these bastards lay a finger on his friends, he will use all his power as an ice blade wizard. Ray said that was why he visited his mentor to tell her about it. Lydia Ainsworth replied that she understood everything and Ray could use his power without any problems. Ray didn't hear her answer right away and continued his fiery speech, but then he understood. Lydia laughed at Ray's surprised expression. Then she asked him if he'd expected her to say anything else. The teacher explained that she had asked Ray not to reveal his identity because it would create unnecessary problems at the school. Firstly, because the aristocrats will start spreading unnecessary rumors, and the seven great wizards would constantly bother him, especially because he was a commoner. Lydia Ainsworth said that all this is of course still some shit that will not be easy. 
but she, as his mentor, will take responsibility for everything that he does, and so Ray can do whatever he wants. And once he uses his power, such an incident will never happen again in the forest. Lydia Ainsworth said Ray should protect his friends, and that's his right. Ray apologized for bothering me, and the mentor admitted that he sometimes makes her worry. Then she suggested a change of scenery and going for a walk together. Ray was happy to support this idea because the weather is beautiful outside. Once outside, Lydia Ainsworth said Ray was right and the weather was really great. The teacher noticed that her student had changed recently. She asked him how he managed to become a completely different person in just three months, and apparently he really found good friends who positively influence him. Lydia Ainsworth asked Ray to come back with her friends next time so that she could appreciate them better. Ray promised that he would do just that and introduce them all. Evie Armstrong asked if Ray had any plans to join a club. Ray Poe knew that he had thought about it and would probably go to two clubs at once. Evie supported his friend and said it was a great idea. And he is sure that there will be no problems with this. After all, their school has several clubs that anyone can join. In each club, you can do different things depending on the direction and many students spend most of their school life in them. Evie asked if Ray was really so impatient, and if that girl had made him too motivated in life. Ray replied that it was true and he wanted more. Ray realized that after talking to his mentor, he was able to clear his mind and decided to just enjoy school life. Evie finished training and said he had to go and they would see each other later. And Ray decided that now he just had to give it his all. Ray went to Evie's club and confidently opened the doors. The head of the club said that they had heard about him from Evie Armstrong and asked if Ray really wanted to join the club. Ray stated that he really wants to join this club and another one, and therefore he is serious in his intentions. The guys from the club asked if he was sure that he would be able to attend their club with a skinny body like his. But some of them pointed out that Ray wasn't so skinny after all. This is an environmental research club that explores forests, rivers, and even glaciers. They battle their environment for daily exploration of nature. And in this club, the social status of members does not play any role. The head of the club warned Ray that having a weak body and will, he had nothing to do here. The club head then ordered everyone to shut up and start training. Everyone said yes, sir, and began to do the exercises. One of the goals of the club was to strengthen the muscles of the participants. After all, people with incredible muscle mass and with organs and muscles that produce enough energy to do the appropriate things will eventually see beauty in their strength. And to describe this beauty, you don't need to say words. Instead, they have connections that transcend all the laws of the universe, and so all members of the club can speak the language of muscles. After the training session, the guys praised Ray and said that he is incredible and deserves to be with all of them. The head of the club said that they are not happy to accept Ray into the club and they will definitely get along in the future. After practice, Ray went to find out about another club. He was on his way to the gardening club. This club, which as its name implies is dedicated to the cultivation and research of plants, is also known as the Flower Garden. Ray greeted the club's head, Bradley Senpai, and explained that he had come here to join the club. Bradley Senpai was surprised and reminded that there are many other clubs for boys, and her club is more of a women's club. But Ray said he didn't see any problem with that. Bradley Senpai replied that it was certainly very unusual, but she didn't mind Ray joining. But suddenly Dina Sira said that she was against it and she doesn't want any commoner to set foot in this beautiful garden. Dina Sarah started shouting that Ray was just an animal who wanted to get close to girls and stank of sweat. The other girls didn't share Dina Sarah's anger and realized that Ray had come to them after training. Bradley Senpai suggested that Dina Sarah look after Mr. Ray White herself. Dina was indignant and asked why she needed it. The head of the club explained that if Dina Sira does not want to accept Ray against the wishes of the head, then she must decide for herself what is wrong with him. And if Dina finds a good reason, then Ray won't be a member of the club. 
Bradley Senpai asked Ray if he was satisfied with the test conditions. Ray replied that he agreed and would gladly try to be a member of the club. Dina Sira couldn't stop wondering why she had to be the one to deal with a commoner. Ray said that he really wanted them to get along, but Dina said that he shouldn't dream about it. Then the girl asked why he even wanted to be in this club, because it is very unusual. Ray explained that all good people can grow flowers, and if he learns how to do this, then someone important to him will be happy about it. And it will be great to learn more about flowers so that you can easily talk about them with someone close to you. Dina Sira thought about it and replied that she didn't quite understand the reason for it, but if she saw Ray doing something weird, she would personally kick him out of this club. Ray didn't hesitate to agree to these terms. Then the guys from the Explorers Club came in. Dina Sira was indignant and asked to stay away from them as much as possible, because they stink incredibly and it's disgusting. The head of the club replied that he really dared to say such a thing to people who cannot without pouring a huge amount of smelly perfume. Dina Sira screamed that it wasn't perfume at all, but a floral fragrance, and unlike the stench of sweaty men, these smells didn't bother anyone. The big guy said that the natural smell of sweat is also very useful, and therefore she should not complain. Dina Sira told them to get out immediately because if they got too close to the flowers, they would all wither from the stench. Evie asked if Ray had decided to join these two clubs. After all, they are now in the midst of a confrontation. Both the club representatives stared at Ray and asked him how he could have done such a thing. Each of them began to insult the opposite club, and in the end they said that Ray can only choose one and nothing else. Ray realized that neither side would back down for anything, and now he faces a difficult choice. The girls were innocent, weak, and spent their free time with plants. In fact, they looked as fragile as flowers. The boys looked like animals. They were dirty and dense, and instead of brains they had muscles. The reason for their feud was unclear, but the result was a clash of two opposing ideologies. Ray didn't even have time to figure out how he'd gotten caught up in this wild battle between two clubs. Rebecca Senpai said that both clubs do very different things, and she does not understand what can be done about all this. Evie Armstrong agreed that a really difficult situation has arisen, but I would like to find out what the reasons for their collision are. He then asked his friend what Ray intended to do in this situation, since he couldn't side with just one person. Ray replied that it was impossible for him. Ray explained that he likes both clubs and that's why he doesn't want to indulge just one person. And he wants them to start respecting each other. And so he has to make them make friends and if he can do it, then he can join both clubs at once and no one will mind. Ivy agreed that it was a great idea, but was there a plan to do it? Ray admitted that he doesn't have a plan yet but he will definitely come up with something to solve the problem. Rebecca Senpai said that since this situation has developed, she has a suggestion. Three days later, a show was organized. A.V. Armstrong greeted all the participants and spectators, and then he announced that Dina Sira and the president of the Environmental Researchers Club would be the main characters today. It is also worth welcoming other guests of the event. Amelia Rose wondered at that moment why she should even take part in something like this. Evie said she was happy to welcome everyone to Ray White's amazing cooking show. Dina Sira and the president of the Explorers Club became indignant and asked what the hell was going on here and why no one warned them about such a setup. Rebecca Senpai and Evie explained that Ray was hosting a banquet and they thought it would be great to have dinner together. Then everyone started looking at Ray's incredible technique as he started cooking food. It was a mystery to everyone what kind of dish he decided to show everything in his performance. Avi continued to comment on Ray's every move and repeat how amazing his cooking skills were. Amelia Rose thought that it wasn't clear yet what would come out of it, but it already looked delicious. In the end, Ray coped and showed off his dish. Dina Serra and the president of the Explorers Club acknowledged that everything looks delicious and smells great. Ray explained that it combines snake meat from the Kafka forest and edible plants. Dina Serra was outraged by this unusual meat 
and the president of the Explorers Club immediately refused to eat any plants. Rebecca Senpai told Dina that she should try this dish because they specially grew these plants to determine their properties. Evie was trying to convince the president of the research club that these herbs were actually good for your muscles. In the end, both sides agreed to try a little. Immediately, they were both struck by the incredible taste of this dish. Each of them felt the delicate taste of meat and the amazing sweetness of unusual plants. She realized that it was the best meat she had ever eaten, and the stubborn bully admitted that the aroma of herbs struck him more than the meat. Ray pointed out that the snake meat came from Kafka's forest, and he got the edible herbs from the gardening club, and Bradley helped him do it. Such meat can only be obtained in the Kafka forest, and this delicacy has gained popularity after long experiments with food. And the plants that are grown on the roof, even on rainy and stormy days, continue to grow with love. With love received from the girls from the club. Ray said that without these two parts, he would not have been able to make such a delicious dish. And similarly, he needs completely different knowledge from the two clubs. After all, each of the clubs has something special, and this can complement the shortcomings of the other club. Ray said that he would be pleased if they realized after his meal that it was time to stop feuding and make friends. Dina Sura exclaimed that she would never do such a thing and the food had nothing to do with it. But unexpectedly for everyone, the president of the research club apologized for his behavior. He said he always thought the flower growers club was a stupid and useless place. But now I've changed my mind because I found out what important and useful research they do when growing plants, and that's why he thinks their club is an interesting place. The president of the Explorers Club said it was his fault and he was very sorry. Rebecca told Dina Sira that he had found the courage to admit his mistakes and had bowed his head to the work of their club. And didn't Dina herself feel the same way when she tasted the fine meat? Dina Sira understood everything and also apologized for her words, which she said in a fit of anger. She admitted that it was the most delicious meat she had ever tasted. And she was exaggerating about the smell of the guys from the club. Rebecca exclaimed that they had finally made up and everything would be all right now. She asked if they both agreed to take in Ray, and they said yes. Ray thanked him for the honor, and Dina asked if there was still such a delicious meat. Evie said that he had asked Ray to make more food in advance, so there was enough food for everyone. Then, everyone saw Amelia Rose eating all the meat she had stored up. Amelia explained that she just couldn't help herself when she heard how delicious it was. Ray thanked Rebecca for helping bring the two clubs together, and she replied that she had done nothing but advise. Everyone was shocked that Amelia ate everything without a trace and began to joke about her and Rebecca admitted that she had been waiting for a very long time for the day when they would all become friends. Ray reminded me that Rebecca wanted to do this for Dina Surat. Rebecca agreed and explained that this lesson would be useful for everyone. And now Dina was able to overcome her stereotypes about people, and the main thing is that she could get used to it herself. Rebecca told Ray that now he could just call her by her first name because she considered him a friend and it would be easier that way.